Today on Earth Focus, marine biologist Dr. Sylvia Earle on the state of the world's oceans. Coming up on Earth Focus. I tell people sometimes that I come from a different planet because the planet that I came from <laughs> is very different from the planet that I live on now. Think about the ocean, 90% of the big fish and many of the small ones too are simply gone. We've extracted them. We've destroyed undersea environments, habitats. About half the coral reefs are either gone or they're in a state of great decline. 40% of the phytoplankton in the sea is gone since 1950, gone. Most of the oxygen that we breathe comes from the ocean, largely from these microscopic bacteria and other photosynthetic organisms. Now, we can still breathe, <laughs> but what we're doing is undermining the integrity of systems that yield what we need to live. What's more important than that? Our economy, our health, our security, or being alive? It starts with being alive. We have to secure within the natural systems that deliver rain that falls magically out of the atmosphere, the clouds. How does it get there? Mostly it comes from the sea. Mostly the water on the planet is in the sea, 97% of it. So should we take care of it as if our lives depend on it? Well, yeah, instead of trashing it. There's some who want to transform Mars to be more Earth-like to diminish that atmosphere that is mostly CO2 into something more like Earth, to terraform Mars so we might live there someday. Meanwhile, we're Marsiforming Earth. We're increasing the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, and we're not really appreciating that our lives depend on maintaining the integrity of our life support system, an atmosphere that after four and a half billion years, it's just right for the likes of us, 20% oxygen, mostly nitrogen, and just a trace of carbon dioxide and other elements. Just right for keeping the photosynthesis going with the forests and in the sea. We're causing the ocean to become more acidic. We, through excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, are stretching the limits of what the ocean can absorb. Ocean is the biggest carbon sink on the planet, but there's a point beyond which carbon dioxide is turning to the excess carbon dioxide to carbonic acid. And this is a trend that's been noticed mostly in the last 10 years. Enough of an impact so that the, the, anything that has a calcium carbonate shell may be vulnerable especially the larval stages of things like oysters and clams, any snail that has calcium carbonate shell. Consider how much has changed as a consequence of what we have done to forests, to wildlife, to the birds, to fish, to whales, to the quality of water on the land, the rivers and lakes and streams, to the ocean, to see such swift change in just a few decades, that's a pretty sobering thought. Yes, we are letting nature slip through our fingers. The flip side of that, that is cause for greater concern for anybody who cares about people, and I'm certainly one of those, it's that nature may be letting us slip through her fingers. We're monkeying around with things that keep us alive, and that's what we now can focus on like no other creatures on the planet, we have the power to understand these things and to do something about it.
U.S. airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.